Professor Sterling, I'm a lecturer in professional education and leadership. Chris Chapman from the Robert Owen Centre for Education and Change at the University of Glasgow. David Cameron. <laughs> from, from at David Cameron. <laughs> Jim Conroy, Vice Principal here at the University of Glasgow. Uh, it's my very simple duty. Uh, most I don't know. <laughs> the highest quality data collection analysis. Along with an appropriate allocation of time to the activity. I'm really just here to add ballast. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Who's going to start us off? My name is Gary Jones. Um, I live in Jersey, so it's been a very pleasure to be here. Um, my question is really around research um, for teachers. Are events like this and the research agenda, are they just more than a fanatic of 10%? Are they just going to be I don't think people would come out on Saturday afternoon to visit this stuff. Uh, and if so, what do you do for the other 90%? Okay, so Saturday is about. And what I think 
got to is we've got on programs to generate quality. And this has been remarkable today because you've had people who I was distressed not to hear. You've got high quality of input and you've got Tom Bennett here, you know, undoubtedly, whatever way you cut it, Tom's a man of stature and reputation across the educational community. He's here today for an event like this because he believes in engagement. And I'm really optimistic about that moving forward. So no, it's not just about that 10% that's engaged, it's with the growing number who will continue to be engaged. And we need to move to a culture where, as I say, we stop embedding change and start growing it, otherwise it will never take root. Should we take one more response from the to um, have the, the right culture within the system and the structures and the systems there for people to engage um, with the research as well. So <coughs> um, people can invest this time, and, and we know that a lot do, but then there needs to be something happening in the system to allow that to happen. And you can't add um, things like professional inquiry onto what's already happening. So I think it's important that we look at um, how we can embed that within the system and across the system as well. Thanks. Um, another question on conservation policy. Oh, yes, please. I've been here. I'm Sarah Park and I'm a teacher in our own youth. I'm lucky enough that our staff engaged in professional inquiry at the university last year. And we
so the teacher's got a day off rather than, you know, fragmenting bits of free time in the course of the week for contact time. Um, we've started talking about the impact of absence, you know, which obviously is unpredictable, <coughs> but we've got the capacity to, to cover for absence, but we don't have a part of the capacity to cover for constructive disengagement of teachers. And I do think we need to start thinking a bit more about how we structure timetabling, how we think about non-contact time, what use we make of staffing, because I do think that you know, we, we engage in some incredibly expensive CPD, um, and the higher up the system we go, the more expensive it often appears to become. If you get to the head teacher, you get a chance to get into the sky. You know, um, if you're a supply teacher, High in the sky. So there's a kind of real issue around that I think that we need to think about because freeing up the time for people to engage both with thinking and myself and also that sharing and discussion of thinking and as well. But it's a practical problem as well as a, a cultural and academic one as well. Quick response just in the next one. Yeah, okay. I'll, 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 I'll take the practical technical issue um, and just go back to the cultural issues. I think it's linked to the previous question. being paid appropriately to undertake scholarly PhD research, for, 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 for example. Then I, I thought, there, I think there were some small things that we could do that would have um, a gigantic disproportionate effect on changing that culture. Could I just briefly say, of course not. Um, you know, I think too, within the, the way we talk about what teachers might be doing in schools as well, are, you know, there are distinct differences. The notion of um, you know, professional inquiry professional is about that sort of value judgment as well and that's often not brought in the same way to the results of research so you cannot for example continue to do something that may have a negative impact on the young people you're working with so there are there are differences between what you were doing if you're working in professional inquiry and the notion we use for example in our model use um, the word inquiry rather than research because Again, if you were teaching young people to read in a new way and it wasn't working, um, you know, you'd use your um, professional judgment to go back to what you were doing or to, to try something else. Um, and when a researcher would stand back perhaps and be absolutely fascinated by what, what was going on, I think we have to, to remember that we are, as you, as you know, when we started off the same speaking, we're also trying to offer the light to different things in some of these conversations.
But this isn't the rest of it. No, 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 underestimate the importance of a coherent account of a particular social, cultural, educational, practical problem. And people who have spent a great deal of time thinking about this are always going to be resourced as a starting point. They're not the end of the inquiry, they're the start of the inquiry. Fifty shades of education. <laughs> <laughs> moment in my work and take that as a starting point for those things. I I totally have a great um, <laughs> 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 I mean only if he's dying. about our professional 
identity. Part of the reason for that is, of course, that the professional identity of teachers, and indeed academics, particularly teacher education, schools, departments, faculties, has been under consistent and insistent attack for the last uh, quarter century. Uh, the consequence of that is to drive people into these narcissistic modes. Uh, but by the same token, one has to be careful that titles are made to differentiate the author from everybody else writing about the same thing. So titles often belie the content. The titles often sound much more kind of esoteric than the content. So one does have to be careful, but I do think there is a problem about self-referential stuff around professional identity when the real object of certain teacher education is what happens to the lives of young people. Given the, the new head of this school, uh, Mr. Michael is a distinguished uh, sociologist of education, uh, who also has done a great deal of work on, uh, on things like parent-teacher households and, and uh, uh, community reading projects and, and so on in Australia. Um, I, I would just wave a flag for two minutes for, for there being questions in the sociology of education that are of direct applicability to the lives of our teachers. If the OECD is telling us that we have our most brilliant pupils, self-reported perhaps, but if they're telling us this is the most brilliant pupils in the Western world, uh, then that's a sociological question. If we have, what, 12 per se of our fifth and sixth year pupils saying that they uh, um, are trans uh, and want that more recognised within the culture of the school, um, then these are sociological I think 
his programs on, on education, on schools, of which there are two or three of them. Never actually talk about what it is people learn, what it is people know, what it is we want people to learn from. It's always about, about the social dynamics of the classroom. It's always about behavior. It's always about the things that are and maybe important in school, but they're ancillary to learning. And there's never a conversation about what this child is learning and how they're going to use that. And I'm an old fashioned liberal educator, I believe in liberal education. How they're going to use that to help them make sense of their lives. Never do. Yeah. Colleagues, it's five o'clock and then we'll come back on time to the end of the session. Uh, and I know that I'm going to be more questions, but I use uh, only an exception to follow up on this uh, this great state and uh, I'm going to hand back to the top. <laughs>